Hello. It's been a long time, hasn't it? And thank you for all those lovely messages saying, where are you? I think we've given you long enough. Are you all right? I know you've had a storm. So thank you for all those lovely messages. And yes, we are all right. It's just been one of those times, one of those times in life where I really thought I would have time and it would go smoothly after clearing mum's house and going away on holiday. I thought, oh, this is, you know, no, it hasn't worked out like that. But then when does life work out how we exactly want it to? We uh, had, uh, last since I saw you last, we've had friends come and stay, which was lovely. That went beautifully and we had a laugh and lovely to spending time together. Uh, I still had a touch of the shingles, but yes, after that next week that went and I felt much better, much better. And then we thought, well, I'm going to have my bedroom decorated and my bathroom and holsters and landing, new carpet. So it's all, you know, and that went well. We had Dave the paint we call him and uh, we've known him for so many years he did our kitchen it's a joy having him here let's put it like that a joy he just he's so clean he just gets on with it and he does a perfect job and uh, well you couldn't ask for anything more could you everything from the bedroom and the bathroom went downstairs into the conservatory and then we also decided to have a new roof between our kitchen and our garage. There's a sort of, well, I suppose it's a sideway, but we've used it as a utility room and a jolly good utility room it makes. And well, it's about time the roof was uh, renewed and it's about time the windows were renewed up here. So we thought we'll have the windows and the roof done and Oh, that would be great and then I'll have my carpet fitted which was supposed to have gone down today but unfortunately things didn't turn out too well I've just had a beautiful bunch of flowers from the company that I booked through I think it's an apology for the way things have gone and so we're now waiting for replacements of replacement and this and that and well anyway let's just put it this way everything that I treasure is in the conservatory and you can't get in there at the minute so worse things happen at sea and whilst all that you know was going on as well we were we had storm is it was it storm kira or kira? oh anyway it was a storm and it hit the southeast of england quite badly but we were we were what well, we were what well we got off lightly i suppose that's what i should say um, and the windows, they didn't fall out and they really were everywhere was quite, quite quiet. So we were pleased. Well, having that tree taken down, can you see that one? It's a Judas tree and it's grown so big and the gardeners are booked to take that out because we've got enough trees and, and then you'll be able to see that the sea. It, uh, it, we cut it down, we pruned it, and after pruning it, it's just gone bonkers. And we can we can do without that, so that's what I'm waiting for, to have that. But of course, it's been so wet. I mean, wet, wet, wet. I know we live by the sea, but, oh, this was ridiculous. But I think so many people are suffering with the weather, aren't they? So it could have been a lot worse. I'm coming on to say hello. Um, not much to tell you, really. I have bought some new yarn. Now, do you say yarn? I've been watching uh, Anita of Gaga Knits and she says, what do you say, yarn or wool? Well, I've always said wool. Even if I go to my wool shop, my local wool shop, I say wool, even if I'm buying cotton or bamboo or all of these other things that you can get now. It's wool, it's not yarn, but by because we're watching YouTube now, it becomes yarn. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Now, when I was growing up, we used to have a toilet, and we've still got one here, our outside toilet, but because we've made it into a, you know, utility room, we've got the original toilet with a chain that goes over, and my mum always used to say, now, have you pulled the chain? Have you pulled the chain? And um, well, that was just a saying that we grew up with. 
Of course, we don't have chains anymore. We have, you know, push buttons. But we've still got, and I'll be, I say to Pete, shall, oh, shall we change it? Shall we modernise it? No, he says, that's got the best flush on it ever. <laughs> boing, comes right down. Boing, it goes back up again. So we've still got the original toilet that was here when the house was built. It still works. You have to, you know, just give it that special kind of pull. But have you pulled the chain? Yeah. But so I have, I have purchased some wool from Anne of Spa Knits. She was having a D stash. I've got it here. There's six. Hang on a minute. I've only got five. I think there's six. Oh, there it is. I'll just pause. It's um, John Arbon spun it. Uh, I think it's a one-off. I'm not quite sure. Oh, the colours are... Oh, look. Aren't they beautiful? And here we get a bit darker. And then I've got three others, all the same. I just dropped one. And I think if I hold the three together, you'll see how they all fade. They're all the same, John Arbon. So what I'm going to knit with that is a habitation throw. It's going to be a great big one that goes right around my shoulders and keeps me warm. So that's one of my purchases. And I'm looking forward to winding it up. Now, I did watch uh, a YouTube, oh, The Thistle. Anyway, they're in Canada, I think. You'll know them. And I'll put it up on the screen. And there was a lovely lady on there. And she was telling you how to store your yarn, your wool, and how to keep it in its best condition. Uh, if you keep it on a shelf, it might fade in the sun. And um, how best to wind it. And she said, even if you wind it with a, a swift, and a wool winder, she said that can pull on the tension of the wool. So she said, even if you do it with that, a swift, just get the cake that you make and wind it by hand if you're not going to use it straight away. Because if you pull too tightly, you're going to take the bounce out of the wool and you're going to, yes, yeah, squash the life out of it really. So I thought that was a very good tip. So I have um, treated myself, well, it was our, as amongst other things, it was our 55th wedding anniversary um, a couple of weeks ago. And I got a Swift and a yarn winder. And very nice it is too. I wouldn't say it's uncomplicated because th these things are a little bit complicated. The old fashioned method of two hands and, uh, you know, doing it by hand surely works on oh, the back of a chair. But anyway, it's very nice to make it into a cake, but that's a fine to use it from the cake, she said, if you're using it straight away. But if not, if you're going to put it on the shelf, wind it quite loosely into a ball because that way it keeps all the fibres relaxed. Well, so that was a tip I learnt, and yes, our 55th wedding anniversary, I, as I say, I got the, uh, I'll put the name of it, the, the wool winder that I bought, and I can recommend it, it's very nice, and you'll never guess what Pete wanted, he wanted a toaster, he was moaning about our toaster, <laughs> Moan, 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 moan about the toaster, this and that and this and that. So I thought, right, I'm going to buy him a new one. I did a lot of research and the one I came up with was a kitchen aid. 
and he's thrilled to bits. Thrilled to bits. You just pop it in and it takes it down and it brings it up and it goes bing when it's brought it up. It's quite, quite good. And he's thrilled with it. And yes, we we were on a train actually. I forget where we were going now. We had to go somewhere. I know, we had to go to Canterbury because I wanted to order my new curtains, which I've done, William Morris, to go with the wallpaper. Not matching, um, but complimentary. So they are ordered. And they're oak leaves in, in the, my wallpaper is a light sage green. And I'll show you, a light, well, I suppose it goes with this chair, light sage green and, the curtains are oak leaves, light sage green, cream and blue. Really pretty. So we had to go to Canterbury to choose that. And on the on the train, he said, oh, you know, uh, he loved his toaster. And he said, you know what I'd really like to do? I said, well, tell me, let's do it. He said, I'd like to do a tour round Britain of all the wool places that you can go the woolen mills so that you can see them doing the wool and and yes just go and explore i thought well i must have the perfect man the man who wants a toaster and who wants to <laughs> do a tour of british british spinning mills and uh, look at the wool that they're producing i'm fiddling with this aren't i, I ought to put it down so uh, that's where I've been. That's what I've been doing. Not much fun, but well, it's all in the scheme of things, isn't it? We were supposed to go away for a few days last week, just when it was all more or less finished. As it happened, it worked out. Of course, we couldn't go away because of the storm. So we had to cancel that and we've got to reorganise. So things here have been a little bit up and down, a little bit, uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle. That's what I would say. So let's do a fascinating fact. I haven't done one for ages and it's about the remora fish. It's a type of sucking fish and it attaches itself. I've got to look at my notes because I won't remember. It attaches itself to rays, sharks, turtles, whales and other sea creatures, regardless of the texture of their skin or their shell. It feeds on parasites and I was telling my daughter about this yesterday and she said, oh, mum, I think the fish actually seek them out because they want to have a, you know, have a clean and they know that they're going to get rid of their parasites. And I thought, yes, that's, I think that's true. Uh, and research, researchers are studying this because this remora fish, it's got a sucker on the top of its head. I'll show you a picture here. And it's, that's how it sticks. Well, you try sticking anything that's wet, it's very difficult. And they've studied this sucker. Uh, and well, it's this disc that's located at the back of the head. It's got a fleshy outer lip that forms a tight seal. And in the disc are rows of spines, which make contact with the host's skin, creating suction and friction. And that remora is firmly attached. Scientists have designed an artificial one. They've copied the remora fish. If only it knew, I think it would be feel rather important. But no, it doesn't know. It's still seeking out these fish and it's still attaching itself, regardless of what the scientists say or do. But anyway, the scientists have designed this, it goes on, and it works brilliantly. How are they going to use it? Well, you know, when they do research, they put these big tags around, you know, undersea creatures' necks and things like that. Well, now they can attach it, you know, through this sucker and it's so much better. So research tags, attaching lights or tools to underwater surfaces or ship of ships and bridges. So there we are. They They can do this sucker now that really sticks so well underwater, under bridges, under ships, yeah, to put tools on it. So I thought how marvellous it was that the remora fish 
is teaching the scientists. So that's my fascinating fact for this week. So I'm going to say, well, I'm going to say cheerio, but what I'm going to put up just before I put the little film up is I've got a couple of viewers who want to knit. Oh, that's it. I've got a little film of the Silver River shawl I knitted for Lois and I've given it to her now. So I took a little film and uh, so I put that up just to show you the finish of it. And then I'm going to come back on and I'm going to show you if you want to know how to do short rows for the Silver River shawl, because I've been promising for quite a while that I would show a few people who want to know. So it's so easy. Once you see it, you'll go, oh my goodness, why didn't I realize it was so easy? So I'm going to say cheerio now, and then I'll come back on and show you the Silver River shawl short rows. I'll show you Lois's um, shawl and my little film of our walk this morning, which, by the way, just as I got back home, um, a seagull did its poop on me, so I had to come back and wash my hair. So there we are. That's how it is. But there's a few worse troubles at sea. So I'll see you in a minute. Hello. Um, I just want to, oh, anyway, I'm not going to say hello because I've said hello on my chin wag. I'm just showing you the scar. I finished this for, for Lois and I'm going to give it to her today. Uh, on the Beach and Sandy by Ellie of Craft House Magic. You see the colours there. And... That's it. Oh, I'm a long way off. I seem a long way off. That's it. Colours are lovely. Feeling is lovely. That's the wrong way. Oh, yes, I put a little ticket on. another one done. So here is the Silver River, the next one I'm making for my granddaughter. Um, I've done one lot of short rows, two lot of short rows. Now with short rows, can you see, you want them a lot of rows there that's going to give the crescent shape and less rows here which makes the crescent shape. Can you see? So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm ready for my next lot. I've done one whole row in this pale pink and on the wrong side, I'm going to start creating these short rows. I'm going to do that by knitting that and knitting back, knitting that and knitting back, knitting that and knitting back, keeping going until I get to the end. So how do I do that? I'm hoping I can show you. Um, I've knitted one complete row with the pale pink. So my next row is the wrong side. And I'm going to knit 10 stitches. My first row requires 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm now going to slip the next stitch. Very easy, slip it. We can all slip the next stitch. Then I put my wool forward as if I'm going to purl and I slip that stitch back. Turn my work. 
I'm all ready here now to knit. Can you see? So I'm going to knit. Only those stitches back. It's a right side row, so I increase on that row, which is going to make this end longer and also fatter because I've just knitted a row there. <clears throat> so now I'm going to do my next row. And I'm going to knit to the end. Not of the end of the row, but to the end of where I did my last short row. Here it is. You can see it is because there's a gap. Can you see the gap? There it is, you can see it quite well, can't you? Here. So let me knit these two stitches. One, two, you can see the gap. Okay. I'm going to now knit nine more stitches. Oh, it doesn't want to go along. Nine more stitches. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now I'm going to slip my stitch, wool forward, and slip my stitch back. Slip my stitch, wool forward, and slip my stitch back. Turn my work. That's my next row done. And I'm going to knit back. I'm now starting to build those short rows up. Let me knit back to the end. End of the right side. I'm on the wrong side again. So I'm going to knit back to where the gap is. And as we start knitting, it will show itself. So here I go, knitting again, the wrong side. And then we're going to slip one stitch from the left hand needle to the right. We're going to put our wool round as if we're going to purl. And then we're going to put that slipped stitch back from the right onto the left. And then we're going to turn our work. Now, I can feel that it's there because here's the gap. Here's the gap. Can you see it? As you come to it, it's just a big gap. It's where I turned last time. And there's my gap. Knit it. And so I'm going to, remember, I'm going to slip one over from the left needle to the right. I'm going to put my arm round as if I'm going to purl. And I'm just going to slip that stitch back. Then I'm going to turn my work, but I'm not going to do that. That's silly, you see. That's because I'm showing you. That would mean that it's the same number of stitches. But no, what I need to do is get to that gap, which we came across. Knit nine. There's my nine. So I've now carried it on further past that last short row. And I'm going to 
slip that stitch from my left needle. I'm going to put the wool round as if to purl and then pop that stitch back on my needle. Then I turn my work and turn it back. So I've knitted those stitches back. I'm now on the wrong side again. I'm going to knit back till I get to the gap, which manifests itself as we knit. I'll show you it again. And so every time I knit another row, it's nine stitches longer. So I'm knitting another row, wrong side. So here I am again. I'm, I've knitted along those stitches on the wrong side. I'm going to keep knitting until I come to a gap, which was the row bef before. It's very apparent. There it is, there's the gap, a gap. And so I knit another nine. Remember what I do? I slip from the left needle to the right. I put my wool round and I pop that stitch back on. I then turn my work. I've got a piece of, I've got this stitch that I slip in slipping. I've got the wool going round the other side of it. And so I then hook that on and I knit back my row. I hope that helps. And so each row now is going to get, can you see, that many stitches longer. That one's longer than that one. Then I knit along. And I do that until I've knitted all those stitches. I'm losing the light now. <laughs> I'll show you that when it's finished. I hope that was helpful. And Lois was very pleased with her shawl. And I'm enjoying knitting this pink one. It's very pink, but it's for a lady who loves pink. So I'm sure she's going to enjoy it too. Uh, oh, just to show you this, I finished Pete's socks. John Arben. And I just do a lovely vanilla for him. Oh, no, it's... It's not a vanilla, is it? It's, it's the one and three rib. And he likes those. And the John Arbon wool is lovely. What I call proper men's socks. Yeah. So there they are. So I managed to knit a pair of socks. Lois' shawl. And that's about all I've managed, really, but it's enough, isn't it? I've enjoyed just sitting knitting in the evenings. And I mean, I've got all my lovely uh, crafting books to make for my photographs. Uh, I've got an idea. I want to do some sewing. Uh, I've sorted all my fabric out. It's all and all my wool out. So, yes, it's once I move back into my bedroom when things are sorted, then my crafty space will become my crafty space and I'll do a little bit more. At the minute, I'm just in the, well, yeah, in the stages of getting there. So I'm going to love you and leave you. And it's been lovely seeing you today. And I'm so glad it's been a while. I can't say when my next one will be. Don't worry about me. Uh, but, well, it might be next week. It might not. It just depends how things go at the minute. So uh, until then, you take care and kind regards and lots of love and 
Oh, the film is just Pete and I's walk this morning. Beautiful day. What's the time now? 25 past four. You can see the sun just going down. And I'm going to edit this tonight and you'll probably get it tomorrow, which will be Tuesday. I'll see you soon. You take care. Bye-bye.